record if anybody has a problem. Um, you can jump off now. And um, yeah, we do have a small group. I think, Kyle, probably you had a lot of people on your call last week. Um, we did. We did. I'm school. sorry. No, yeah. no, no, no. That's yeah. good. No, we, we had to. Those were good answers. So that's 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 all right. So this may not um, go as long, but that's okay. Um, we do have thanks for uh, the PTA members that are here and for the parents that are here. Thank you all very, very much. Julia Cooney um, with the Sea Home PTA. Um, just wanted to, um, we have a, a light agenda, not a lot of things, but a few topics we wanted to make sure we covered. Um, one was, uh, Leslie was going to talk just to, quickly about the financials and um, where we are with that. So Leslie, I'll, I think I can just let you speak in there. Yep. Okay. Um, well, we've spent about like a total of, um, we've approved about a total of 6,000 in the teacher grants and we've spent about 4,600 of that. So we're looking for one more to pay for um, that have been approved. So we're hoping to receive more because we still have a lot more money that we want to spend. Um, the directory fundraiser netted about $4,200. So that's great. And um, anyone who bought a directory, a, a printed directory, who did not pick it up yet, it's, um, there's a box in alphabetical order at the security guard desk. Um, I'm trying to think if that's it. The only other fundraiser that we potentially will be getting money from is the PTA Spiritwear that we're planning right now. Um, everything else is kind of on hold. Yeah, uh, we were we were wondering, and, and Stephanie may mention this. The, um, um, there is an opportunity if we can find a local restaurant with all of the um, home delivery. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we're going to see if we can find, and if anyone knows of a of a local restaurant where you have a connection with the owners, we thought we might do a fundraiser with a local restaurant um, for takeout, and maybe a percentage of the sales for a period of time um, could also go to the PTA and to the students in the school. So, if anyone has any suggestions um, of any local uh, restaurants or businesses that they're aware of. Um, that's another um, fundraising um, fundraising idea. So that's uh, that's something else we're thinking of. And then for spend, I think Kyle's going to uh, get back to us on whether there's some uh, needs for some additional mics when we go to right. for uh, improving the Zoom in the room, um, mm -hmm. and some of the communication with the kids when they're on Zoom. So uh, the PTA is going to be available to support um, uh, to support that. So um, that'll mm -hmm. be great. All we'll right. Hear a little bit more about that. Okay, so we're good on, that. we're good on the money. Great. Mm -hmm. um, just wanted to, um, for those who are here, uh, there's a few more people. Um, the Reflections Art Program, um, the applications for that are due this uh, Friday um, to Diana Patterson. So um, her email address is d4patter at gmail. Um, and so if you have children, students, kids who um, are in the arts, um, in any way, music, um, fine arts, dance, any of that, um, please encourage them to uh, um, to do an application um, for the uh, Reflections program. Um, first Fridays, we are going to kick back on to doing the first Fridays for the teachers. So um, we want to um, get some people out there on uh, for the teachers and the staff. We want to get people out there onto the um, Sign Up Genius. You can get that through the e-news. Um, we um, think this is a really important time to thank. Uh, to thank our teachers for all the really hard work and for being in the school and for the staff for being in the school and um, um, They still get excited about it. I think they missed it because we didn't we didn't do it in October or November So we need to we need to get it filled up um, in, in December So we have some uh, some nice swag gift cards and things and the like to give away. So um, uh, Please uh, take a look at that on the e-news and we'll have a we'll have a, a link to it also on the PTA website um, When you uh, if you want to take a look at that so we can we can do that. Um, oh, we do have one other fundraiser is Kroger's. If you shop at Kroger's, as I think many of us do, um, you can uh, the shopping that you do at Kroger's goes to can go to the PTA. So if you have one of those reward cards for Kroger's, um, then um, oh, let me get in more of a person. Then you um, you just go out to the Kroger website. Um, there'll be a link. We'll put that up on the, that's on the PTA website as well, and they'll give you the instructions on how to sign yourself up. You put in a code, and then whenever you shop at Kroger's, um, a portion of that money. Um, comes back um, to uh, PTA to see home, which is great, and it's 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 easy money. Um, and with the holidays coming up, Thanksgiving and so forth, um, people can do their spending do their spending there. So that would be that would be great. Um, the one other uh, topic before I move on um, is we wanted to we had a great session last month. Um, and thank you, Shannon, for um, um, for uh, bringing in our guest speakers, um, and um, we got some really good feedback um, on the mental health and suicide prevention. 
And so um, it is available out on um, the PTA website to see the recording. Um, but what we wanted to talk about, and I think this is a good sized group, there are some other topics um, that we want to bring um, to the PTA and to the parents. I think we thought the mental health and suicide prevention was an important one, particularly because we were hearing from a number of parents concern about what COVID was, was doing and impacting um, their students um, and their home life. So we were, Janet and I were talking about what would be some other potential topics, and we'd love to hear from all of you about what you know, your ideas are and what those might be. We, we threw around a couple, um, uh, an organization that I've worked with <clears throat> in the past uh, has done quite a bit around what they would call um, cultural competency or um, unconscious bias, um, um, or how one deals with um, microbursts, um, uh, um, aggression bursts. And so we were talking about maybe there's something we could do around that, um, um, particularly for our kids in this climate um, and for all of us as parents, you know, how do we be more culturally competent and kind of be more aware of our unconscious biases that we have. Um, and so that's one topic we talked about. Um, don't know any thoughts on that. Kyle, I know you had mentioned that there was a, a couple who uh, did some talks uh, around um, sexual harassment, I believe it was, right. mm -hmm. um, and whether there's an interest from any of the parents on that topic um, for the students. Mm -hmm. And then I was interested in what are our legal rights when your child is 18, because mine just turned 18 last Thursday. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and uh, um, so those were three topics that we were thinking about, but I wanted to kind of open it up if there were some other topics that people thought might be relevant for your students, for your kids. Um, as parents that you'd like the PTA to support, and we would certainly look to fund outside um, speakers to come in and, and speak um, for us. So I'm going to open it there. Any ideas from anybody? Or do any of those topics I mentioned make any sense? <clears throat> yeah, I just, so that everybody could see it, um, I just listed them in the chat. Thank Please. you. Thanks. Yeah. And I can add more than that way. I just have a running list so that when we walk away from this, we, we have it. I, I would love to see the parental rights of an 18 year old student, particularly if we could get somebody to bring in the forms. Um, you can get them free on the internet. There's three forms that you need, but it would be um, okay. Particularly yeah. in light of COVID, if your child goes in the hospital and they're in college and they will not talk to you unless you have those forms signed. Absolutely. Yeah, under HIPAA I laws. I, yeah, I just did that because yeah, Sarah goes to LA in January. So I, I had no idea, no idea. So that would be really, really helpful. Okay. And I think that um, sometimes, uh, f especially for new parents, um, when they go, when the students go off to college, um, it's a shock when you don't receive information and you have to get all your information through your, your, your child. And you know how easy that can be. So <laughs> I think that <laughs> parents, if you know like where to, how to go it, that information is really helpful um i think so i i think that is a definitely a good a good piece of and also how to get them to sign it like how to, you know what i mean i think that's right. a big part of this right, right? Totally. i personally yeah. threatened to cut her off but i'm just saying <laughs> no me too me too i'll admit that seriously <laughs> i mean you got to use it but but like in a normal world right with normal right. parents like how do you go about talking to them about this right. without them mm -hmm. feeling like you're treating them like a child again? Right. Right. Good. All right. So that's it. We'll need an attorney for that one. So I have a few <laughs> yes. contacts or uh, Jenny, you probably do. We can think of uh, who could run that session, who could run that right. session for us. Yeah. I also, I also do um, find that, and, and, and we have done this in the last few years in the spring with the sexual harassment and the, um, uh, the idea of what constitutes, it really has been informative for our seniors. We do it during the senior transition so that our students, both male and female, understand the um, consequences of their behavior, things that they might not consider as, you know, being anything um, important or special, you know, and, and I think these two families who are Seaholm parents um, and happen to both be lawyers have done a wonderful job at presenting that to our students and our students have found that very valuable. I think our parents would find it very valuable when you are sending your child off um, again, and especially if it's the first one and you're not, you know, not sure of what they're going to be encountering as they move into the college setting. Um, I think you'd find it fascinating and, and really helpful. So Kyle, on that one, would you mm -hmm. suggest in that, because <clears throat> we talked about this being a PTSA sometime, mm -hmm. 
So would this be a type, but you also mentioned that you do something through with the students already through the school. Would you mm -hmm. encourage if something were set up like this to have more student involvement as well? Right, right. And maybe that's where we should move it in this, you know, at this time. Um, but yes, absolutely. Students need to be involved in this. Absolutely need to be involved. And we're going to, we will ensure that on the school level, but I think parents, um, mm -hmm. you'll find it really informative and um, and helpful as your you know as your as your son or daughter moves off into the college setting. Um, so, absolutely, I think it could be done in something that's a joint session. But it will be done. We will do provide something like that for our seniors as they move into college. Um, and um, I, but I do believe parents will find it especially um, helpful. I have, a, I have a question too. I, I personally think that talking about touching and everything else in relationships, right, and sex with kids should come early instead of later, but that's just my opinion. But have you guys ever thought about putting on something for the freshman and sophomore too about right touching and, and for both genders and that kind of stuff? Because kids right. are doing stuff earlier, just mm -hmm. a thought, you know, right. and right. Yeah. I don't know, is it better to try to catch it and teach it early rather than correct mm -hmm. it when they're already active? I don't know. Right. No, thanks, Stephanie. Um, we have not considered doing that for the early grades, um, but I'm entirely open to that if the parents are open to that. I mean, it's right. one of those things uh, that's very delicate. I know. We don't, we don't want you know, to push them into that I'm like, that I'm kind of... it, but I know a lot are. I know a lot are. I just, but I'm with you. That's no, where, that's with you. I think people are naive, if they, and I hate to say that, and I know I'm super laid back, but they're going to do stuff. You know what I mean? So why not have them prepared right, right? the right way? Because stuff does happen and, and they just don't know. I, that's how I feel. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate that and I'm willing to talk about that if that's something that the PTA um, and parents yeah. tell us that they're interested in. Um, I'm entirely open to that. There are, of course, parameters around that right. for health education, but I'm open to that if that's something the parents want to, to talk about. We can bring in experts and yeah. um, and I'm I'm... I agree with you, Stephanie. I mean, quite frankly, in the last few years, as, as I've been principal, each year things are brought to me about what's going on in our own community, let alone college, you know, what we're looking at in the future. It does, to be frank, it does happen at the high school setting as well. And it's not um, something we shouldn't talk about. Um, I have to admit though, it generally happens in the, in the um, junior and senior year. Uh, that's where we're seeing, we don't generally see it in the early grades, um, but uh, it is something that maybe it definitely warrants discussion, especially if the parents want that. I'm entirely open to helping with creating something like that. And I, and I would think too with, with, with Zoom that one could you know, agree and get permission and the, the links and so forth could be sent that way. So it's controlled and maybe for certain students it would be more comfortable in their home in their own setting than in right. a classroom with other, right. other kids um, you know, during, the, during the topic. Um, I know when my daughter was in the sixth grade, uh, a school she was in at the time did a session for moms and dads about what your kids are probably looking at on the internet and what to introduce them to and what you know and how to help them because they're going to navigate and they're going to look for things um boys boys more than girls apparently um and you know it's no longer the the magazine from the from the five from the from the you know the, the corner store but what they can see online and and how to have those kinds of conversations because it's much more difficult to control and what's normal, what's not normal. So we could right. certainly, you know, come up with a, an outline and then mm -hmm. see how parents want to, uh, would, would, or would feel about, uh, would feel about it. Yeah. If that is, if that is something that our parents would like, I, I would be happy to, and I know our counselors would be happy to help support, um, increased research and understanding on that. Um, but absolutely we deal with it at the high school level in just about every grade, but certainly, um, some of those topics in the 11th and 12th grade, definitely, um, okay. start to to rise in um, importance. Okay. Um, on the topic of unconscious bias, bias or, or cultural competence, uh, I, I, Kyle, I believe that you and some of the faculty are reading a book or two, um, mm -hmm. and, and I'm curious um, how that has how that has gone, and is there something along mm -hmm. that topic that we would even take out uh, to the parent community? 
Um, um, uh, yeah, thank, thank you, Julia. I really appreciate your um, putting some awareness on this. Um, you know, I think everyone knows who's been paying attention to what's going on in our, our world today realizes that there has been increased intention and should be increased intention on um, on cultural response, cultural responsive um, behavior, not just in the teaching world, although that's crucial and it's of course my my um, focus, but I think we all do as citizens of our country need to consider that. And so here at Seaholm, we've been um, we've been working on um, culturally responsive teaching for the last at least five years intentionally, um, and certainly prior to that. But we have so many hours of professional development devoted to that. And even this year, with all of the um, focus on COVID and making sure we understand technology and all of those things that are crucial, we still have had one um, full professional development afternoon on, um, on that topic of, of culturally responsive teaching and understanding how to connect with our students. Um, and I think, I think that's essential. And, uh, we, and here at Seaholm, we are committed to that work. Uh, we have um, teachers who also um, have, beyond that professional development that we're requiring, have said that they're interested in helping and promoting that kind of work. We've, um, we're re reading um, three books right now, uh, right with the staff. One is um, Dare to Lead by Brene Brown who works with um, just the, the, the culturally responsive classroom and leadership and being daring leaders in the classroom. And then we are reading um, the book, How to Be an Anti-Racist by um, Ibram, uh, Kendi Ibram, Ibram Kendi, sorry. And um, we are reading that book and then we're reading also a book by it's created for it's it's created for adolescents and our black student union students have read this book together last spring and summer, um, and we are reading that book as well. So we have a lot of staff members who are meeting and reading those books and talking about what we can do to um, create a uh, environment that is not only culturally responsive but but welcoming and um, ensuring a student that. Um, that we are receptive and open to, you know, all students and and all students of color and all students of, of thought and and um, that it's more than it's it be, it goes beyond race if it goes it goes beyond um, simple boundaries into what are we who are we as people and how do we connect with one another and. Um, this has been something that that I think is really important at Seaholm, and it's growing, I think, across our country. So um, we are look, looking to increase that. So we'd love to have our parents involved in this. Last um, spring and summer, we had some of our students in the Black Student Union conduct, conduct um, marches, but we also brought um, several of our groups and communities together we um, had some of our um, African-American students come to a staff meeting and talk about their experiences. Uh, we had, um, that was um, prior to, um, we had the, when we had to go into lockdown because of the COVID, but during the spring and summer, we also had some of those students. One of the things that came out of the um, faculty meeting was how do we connect our African-American students here in Birmingham and at Seaholm to our police department so that there is a sense of some mutual understanding. And so um, I was really pleased to see um, Leslie Martin, Robin Moten, um, and some of our, uh, Rochelle Rogers, some of our leaders here, teacher leaders here at the school, along with our students, just some wonderful students who came together and we brought our students to the um, police department and they had a meeting together to talk about um, how do we how do we conduct our surveillance and surveillance and how do we conduct um, our police business and in the in the context of of bias and and race and um, and I think it was a wonderful beginning, but it's something that we need to continue as as we move forward. And so unfortunately, this whole uh, the whole COVID business has really interfered with some of that growth. Um, but it is something that Sea Home again is committed to and we'll continue to to, to work with. 
So it sounds like there may, thank you, thank you, uh, Kyle. It sounds like there may be an opportunity to expand what you're doing with the teachers um, and maybe see if there's an interest among some of the, the parents and the students. That'd be wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's, you know, uh, uh, read read the book or read excerpts from the books or one of the books or have a speaker come and, and, and speak to the topic and have some open dialogue and discussions and so forth. And maybe it's a, maybe it's even a little series that we do that people may yeah. want to I embrace think on. Um, yeah, I think that's a great idea. And I noticed... Um, the question here about the BBCC about um, their, their community survey. Yes, they continue to do that, okay. um, Jenny. And um, we, uh, I'm trying to think of if, if this COVID thing interfered with that last spring, you know, but we do that every year. We ask our students to uh, be a part of the survey about um, a variety of issues, including drug use and substance abuse. Um, and and the, the results are eye-opening. Um, and I think relevant to every parent um, in the community and certainly every educator in the community. And it's not just Seahome, right? They do like all the area high schools. Right, and right. So it's, it's right. Really all Oakland County. It's a picture of what's going on here. Yeah. I think so you're right, Jenny. Schools. That's a real good point. It, uh, it does give us that. And one of the distinctions that I always see in that is interesting. And I was right, talking right. to a parent about this earlier today. What students think is going on in their perspective and what is really going on in their own lives. Because students have a tendency, and I think we all have a tendency, oh, well, this is out there, this is what everyone does. But then when you ask them what they do, it's a different percentage. And so, you know, there's, you, you know, I think we need to take those statistics in and look at that survey and then see and balance, you know, because people have a tendency, well, everyone is doing drugs. You know, everyone is drinking, everyone is. And you know what, when we look at, you know, personal, you know, are you doing that? The answer is less, you know? So it's, it's an interesting dynamic, but I think the more information the parents have, the more we can have those really on, you know, really truthful and open discussions about our students and their behavior. How would we get the access to that survey? Um, you know what? I, I can work. I can reach out to. Okay. Um, is it Laura still? Was it Laura at one point? Was... No, it's now Kathy. Um, okay. And I will reach out and see what the latest results of that survey are, okay. and then um, try to get that um, you know out there to to parents. Yeah. So if I'm, they have I'm that in a that. presentation, it's because it's broken right. down very it's well. A great idea. Grades yeah. And like yeah. by like, right. Right, right. So I'll good. make a note of okay. taking a look at that and seeing if I can gather that information for people. Okay, okay. Thanks. That'd be great. Any other topics that uh, come to mind? But I think we'll we'll we'll, we'll look at all those those areas: the uh, the legal, um, the sexual harassment, whether we want to broaden that audience, um, mm -hmm. and then the um, the cultural response and the um, uh, the focus around the anti-racist or the um, cultural competency. Um, Sure. And so forth and see if we can put a program together um, with some readings and things might be might be a nice thing to to do. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Julia, um, the other one I threw out there is what about a motivational speaker? Oh, yeah, they are so energizing. And mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think of something that, you know, part of us is to build a community, the PTA. How cool would it be just to have like, I don't know, just some inspiring dude or dudette <laughs> or non non binary person? Right. Right. come in yeah. and do something that we yeah. could again bring this bring the students bring that i mean i'm gonna have to figure out what how, what we'd want to do but oh my gosh i've i've listened to a couple and i you know yeah uh, i had a chance to listen to um she, she, I, I can't think of her name i know she's one of the um she was in the world cup and in the uh, olympics for soccer uh several years ago and she was incredible i mean just incredible i mean and i mean obviously someone like that may cost us more than we can afford but i think we could mm -hmm. look at what what contacts we have and who knows who and what different kind of speakers we could get and i think that would be i think that would be great too and, and maybe it's even reaching out to some of our alumni um and figuring out where some of them are um you could also they, involve groves in there too yeah I think. Mm -hmm. a lot of money you know what i mean sure, and, and that's maybe the middle schools too depending yeah. on content and whatever yeah. yeah, we yeah. often, with uh, Career Day, we reach out to alumni who have been, mm -hmm. you know, successful in their careers and stuff, and maybe we, we don't need to wait for Career Day. Right. Um, I just spoke right. to one of our, um, one of our students is um, like the CEO or has brought in, you know, 
oh, help me, Mike. Okay, this is, I'm thinking of like the fat head um, from uh, Quicken Loans, uh, yeah, Rock Quicken Finance Bill. But I yeah. thought he was, Gilbert? he was StockX, I think was the, the CEO of alumni is oh. the founder of StockX, which is the Quicken owned company that actually sells sneakers, I believe. No, there's, a, another, there's another one who does. Dan the, Gilbert this. is a Groves parent. Right, Dan Gilbert, but mm. there's others that have um, created <laughs> things that, like Dan L. Gilbert has then bought, okay, and certain Matt Ishbia, who's from the other mortgage company, is a is a graduate of Seaholm. And so maybe what we do is bring some of those people in as motivational speakers yeah. to the parents and to the students, yeah. you know, through PTA. We've, we've reserved them, and I'm just, I'm so sorry that the name is escaping me. I'm really sorry because I taught the kid when I was an English teacher, so <laughs> I feel really terrible. But he, my kids were so, my own kids were so impressed when they are like, oh my God, you taught him? And do you know, and okay, this is complete aside, but my husband and I were binging on Longmire, this Western, weird Western show. And I'm looking at this kid, I'm uh, this person on, I said, you know what? He looks so familiar. What else have we seen him in? We must have seen him in something. And we're thinking, I'm thinking about it. And finally he looks at him and he says, and I'm thinking to myself, it can't be that. And yes, it was a former student of ours, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, this, this guy who's this actor, you know, and he, I knew he went off to, to study at Juilliard, you know, so maybe we bring some of these people back, especially during this COVID era. I'm guessing this was Patrick Dara. He plays, it's a small part on the show, but I mean, he, he's been in several apparently. And we bring them in to, to have meetings, like to say, hey, yeah. there's a little bit of motivational, you know, that we'll bring yeah. you in and talk to the parents i mean i mean how many parents of creative kids do we have i mean there are some parents sitting here whose kids are creative and they want to go into the arts and we're thinking yep. holy cow where <laughs> is that going to lead them you know i had one I myself <laughs> oh my gosh you're like yikes you know right. and he can tell us a little bit about that you know and um so maybe some of those things shouldn't be reserved just for career day but maybe yeah. pta which is trying to find, I think trying to find a real nice transformation here is relevant work for our, you know, yeah. our, our parents. Um, maybe something like that is, is something we can do. That'd be great. So, so, yeah, how, I, so I love that. Yep. Whoever said, was it Shannon, you about the, idea. the motivational? Nice idea. Like yeah. It. So we'll love have it. That. Come on. Can I bring that. up two things real quick? Please. One, um, my company does that quarterly for us. And I got to oh. tell you, I know it's expensive, but if you, if you tell them it's for a school, they might do it, do it yeah. differently, obviously, right? Uh, with their pricing. And if it's Zoom, it's, I mean, it could also yeah. be Zoom yeah. right now yeah. and you could start yeah. it. Honey, right. it's not gonna be even a quarter of the price. It's gonna, right. they don't have to go out of their living room, right? So right. that's another right. cost savings. But the people that really specialize in motivational speaking, yeah. So there is something to that. I've seen both. I think there's war there's there's a basis for both of them. The community to show success that we've, you know, they've gone to the same school as you and they've done that. That's awesome. But also someone who does this for a living, there's nothing like it. And it just kind of mm. rises you up and gets your blood pumping, you know? So yeah, right. Just an idea, especially since we're on Zoom. We it. could even mm -hmm. maybe start it soon because nobody's doing nothing. Well, and I'd say February, because February, we're going to be dragging. Oh, my gosh. Yes. yes. You know, so how yeah. great would it be to have an inspiring, yeah. oh, you know, like. There's never a time when we need it more than, like. Right, right. February. Right. Oh, or who's got, or, or who because has contacts. These are later in the month, yeah. if it's later January, I think that would be great. I love we'll, that we'll, idea. We'll we'll get on that and maybe we'll figure out a way to get a message out to some parents um, through email. Kyle, we can talk about whether Kathy can send something out and we'll we'll put something together to kind of get the juices going on thinking about um, who has contacts. Um, it's certainly my sister, just as a side note, is a teacher in a school in LA. So obviously there's lots of people that do have huh? contacts. Mm -hmm. And for their seniors, they had Ariana Gandhi. Just saying. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> he showed up as oh, a surprise because well. someone worked newer from that darn California. You know, California. I know exactly. The contacts out there are a little different. Who's so, that? Um, 
Um, one of the things, <laughs> if, if you don't mind that I intervene here, I'm looking at Carrie, who's being so lovely yes, and polite please. here. You know, we can get on to that. Thank she's you. She's one of our biggest fans here at Sea Home, and so I really appreciate it. But I brought her in just to talk about, <laughs> about AP registration because there was a question about that. And I know I, I'm actually a little surprised at, at our attendance here, you know, because yeah. the last meeting we had 200. So, um, but I know that I asked Carrie to be here about please. to talk a little bit about registration. Could she talk a little please. bit about that? and then we could That'd let her go. That'd be great. Thanks. I'll be your way. <laughs> thank you, Kyle. And thanks for having me. Um, I'm Carrie Balo. I'm the counseling secretary at Sea Home. I've been there for seven years. I'm also a, a Sea Home alum, class of 86. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was not a teacher there. I just want everyone to know that. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> I came three years later. <laughs> oh, <that's our> girl. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at my notes because there are a lot of moving parts with this and I want to make sure that I deliver it clearly. So we offer a lot of AP classes at Sea Home. When a student is in an AP class, they have the opportunity to take the AP exam at the end of the school year. So the first two weeks of May are dedicated towards AP exams. Um, we at Sea Home offer 24 exams and we test, we administer close to a thousand exams in those two weeks every year because we have many students that take multiple exams. Um, there are two parts that are really important to registering for AP exams. One part, the first part is the student's part. The second part is the parent piece. So the first piece is the student needs to register through College Board in their AP classroom. They do this with their teachers and their teacher gives them the join code and it's something that they all talk about in class. In fact, if you have a student that is taking an AP class right now, ask them if they have joined their AP class yet. Um, I can see College Board and we have many students that have and many that have not So that's the first piece is that the students need to do that. If they haven't joined yet, that's fine. They do need to get the join code from their AP teacher. So if they haven't yet joined, they need to reach out to their teacher for that code. The second piece of registering for AP exams is the parent piece because it's the money piece. <laughs> So in February each year, we open up the online registration for AP exams. It runs the entire month of February. We will have the link sent out in e-news. We will have it on our website. Uh, teachers will be reminding their students that February, it's time to register for the AP exam. You're gonna, we use total registration which is a fantastic company that really helps to keep us organized with close to a thousand exams. Um, and so as a parent, typically, sometimes the students do it, but mostly the parents, you'll log into total registration, fill, this is where you choose what exam your student is taking and you pay for it at that time. Once you've registered your student, through total registration. Now I have emails for you and your students. I can send out reminders. I can send out testing locations. Um, and so it really helps to keep us organized. The reason that we have a really strict deadline for AP registration, it ends at the end of February, is that we need to order all of the testing materials the first week of March. So unfortunately, it's difficult for us to, um, you know, to take care of people that miss that one month window because we need to put our order in for testing materials. Uh, let me check my notes. <laughs> I think that's about it that I have, but I'd, I'd love any questions that you have about registering. Uh, Carrie, I was curious. Um, so it is the AP teacher that should be communicating that information. 
So if a, is that right? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if a student is not in an AP class, and I think, again, I, I think of Flex because my daughter was in Flex, how do they know that they should be signing up, could take, do qualify, all that business for a particular AP test if they're not in the class? Great question. We do have students, um, some are doing a self-study and some are in flex that wish to take the AP exams. So Christy Fakaris, who is the department chair for counseling, and she and I coordinate the AP exams together. Uh, she and I went into the flex class through Zoom and we presented to them all of this information. Okay. So the really important piece and why, um, so most schools are, are semester schools, most high schools around here and throughout the country. Um, they had a deadline that was last week to sign up for AP exams. Oh. We don't have that deadline because we're a trimester school. So we're able to do this in February. Um, but if you've heard friends from other schools talking about AP registration, they needed to do it. Well, our, the one caveat for us though, our kids that are not in AP classes needed to register last week. So that's why we presented to the flex kids okay. how to do that. They didn't have to do the paying piece yet. They can still do that in February, but they had to do their piece, which is choosing, yes, I want to take the exam or no, I don't within College Board. Okay, so that's a College Board requirement. It is, okay. it is. Um, and I'll tell you when they first started this last year was our first year. Um, we thought, wow, this is so early. It's in the fall, you know, they, and we weren't sure how it was gonna work out, but I'll be honest, with the schools closing down, but yet we were still administering all the exams, we we really were thankful that College Board had done this. Okay, okay. And then, um, I, oh, yeah, go ahead, Jenny. Can I ask a question? It's not really related to sign up, but is there, um, are the AP results or see home public anywhere? Is that something we as parents You're could see? Mind. We, um, on our school profile, which you can find on the counseling website, the Sea Home Counseling website, the school profile breaks down um, how many students have a three or above, how many students. Um, is that by subject or is that just X number of kids took? By subject. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. And that's in the profile. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Because that was the statistics, Kyle, that I was mentioning. I was curious to see what those look like and how they compared to other to other schools. How how see home the number of students that take AP tests and the exams right. and how they score and right. and so forth. Because I I know when my right. daughter took a test, you could on College Board you could see all these different teachers from different schools um, almost competing with each other about how many of their students got certain scores. So I just was curious. Um, and then I think too. I know tonight is a um, um, just yeah. uh, just as a just to let you know. It looks like Mike. Thank you, Mike. Um, sent a link to the results. Mike, you want to explain just oh, briefly what you just sent to everybody on the chat? Super. Ah. So that's exactly what Carrie just mentioned. I pulled it right off the counseling website. I bet you Carrie put it there herself. <laughs> and if you if you click on it, it just has the, the right at the bottom of the first page. Vast placement courses in May 2020, 390 students took 691 exams, okay. and they broke down the course name, the number tested, and then a percentage of scores three or higher. So right. you can't. Okay. It doesn't break down the 109 kids that took a push. So many got a one, two, three, four, five, but um, at a certain level. Right. There is some, uh, you know, privacy issues with that, but it does at right. least let you know how many kids passed the AP, which is scoring three or better. Got right. It. So, okay. so yeah. So that information is available. Um, you know, as as Mike just said, sometimes as you dig deeper and deeper into the weeds, you could, you know, we could have questions about, you know, what students um, are doing, how they do if they take the course as opposed to not taking the course. Those kinds of things that we would. Be happy to share with individual parents should they you know should they request it we can, we can sit yeah. down with them and, and talk about yeah that. i was i was wondering whether some of that information might be useful 
to parents, really freshmen and sophomore parents, because it's uh, in a couple conversations I've had with a couple parents, um, they're kind of asking the question of, um, you know, now that I'm looking at a certain school, or someone just warned me that if my child wants to go to this school, they need to have four APs or five APs, and how right. are we going to get those in the curriculum? How do we know which ones they're going to take? You know, right. when are they going to take them? And again, for certain students who are not either in the AP class or, again, mm -hmm. I worry more about the flex students, how do they know what they're going to need to do on their own to right. Um, right. be able to take the test and get a certain score in those kinds right. of Right. And the other, you know, question is some colleges take um, only a five, like Harvard, if you don't, you have to get a five. Whereas, you know, another school might take a three. Three right. is considered passing, so three, four, and five. Um, some students, there's a, there are two English exams, I know, because I, I taught one of them, AP Lit, for so many years. Um, but like MIT won't take the Lit exam that I taught, you know, but they'll take the AP Lang. Or some colleges will only take one or the other. And so it's really important for parents to understand um, that uh, it depends on the college they're attending. But it's also important for, for parents to understand that sometimes it, it's, it's um, predicated on the fact that the student take the, took the course, you know, so the course is giving them some credit because the parent, because the schools understand the nature of the course. And so the, there, are, there are, you're right, Julia, some real, you know, intricacies yeah. to this um, yeah. and um, parents should should be aware of some of that. Um, we try to introduce that at different meetings, certainly like the eighth grade orientation, we talk about it a little bit, but sometimes those those poor parents are often deer in headlight if that's yeah. their first, if if that's their first kid. Right. Well, We're well, throwing this a, information at them. So. I kind of have an idea. <laughs> well, how we do mentors for kids. Mm-hmm. Why don't we do mentors for parents that they oh, have? This is their idea. first, because mm -hmm. I'm going to be real honest. I didn't understand anything. Thank God I had Amy Hokemer, right, in my in my right and left pocket, because she guided me with mm -hmm. Sarah through so much, so I understood, because without her, I'm not even sure Sarah would go to college, like, just to be honest. So if you kind of had parents like, you know, that this was their oldest child, so that they could walk in, and then it helps them almost meet some people, too. Just an idea where they could call yeah. that person and ask questions, you know, especially if they had an upperclassman or an older child that are, you know, a younger child that's already in high school and an older child that's now in college. So mm -hmm. just an idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or we I could like do it. groups of mentors even, Stephanie, to your point. I mean, it could be one-on-one -on -one or it could be some groups. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, oh, like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be a group thing too. Just put them in yeah. small groups together. I definitely yeah. wouldn't have big groups um, yeah. because I yeah. think yeah. everyone yeah. would drive each other crazy with the messages and stuff but yeah, yeah anything would be awesome because I think I, I mean I know there's great material that the counseling department does when the kids are you know starting to get ready for applications for college but I think for some parents it's like whoa now, now that feels too late because that's far too late yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, I didn't think about that AP or we didn't yeah. you know, we didn't look at their their, their, right. their schedule and say they should have taken right. you know econ a uh, you know econ micro and macro so they could have taken both those tests right. and what could we have done to move the schedule around to make that happen and and so, um, um, and I know dual enrollment has come up recently and a couple people have asked about that too. So, right. so maybe we could think about a session um, and then maybe to your point, Stephanie, maybe it is a little mentoring group or something that kind of helps, you know, it's really the freshman and sophomore parents because that's when you're really trying to figure right. it out. When you get right, to this, exactly. in junior year, you kind of run on a runway to take those classes, right? It's yeah, a long you're, out of, you're out of steam. It is what it is by that time, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and I would say that uh, AP economics is a great class, you know. <laughs> As the former teacher, <laughs> just to throw that one out there. But speaking of, it's an interesting situation. You take AP Economics, uh, you can get a five on it, and Michigan will give you no credit. I know. Unless you go back and you take the course again. So, I mean, there, there's lots of rules, and, you know, and yeah. I would say that the – the days are gone where you can, you know, end up going to college with 40 credits like there used to be because no. fewer classes or fewer colleges are giving out fewer credits and more of them are giving out waivers and like, oh, you've got a five on AP US history. Great. You can jump right to history 250 
we're right, not going to still need all those credits. Yeah. yeah. So it's all about money. Using it it's as always all about mm-hmm. money. Right? Yeah. They're using it as an admission yeah. criteria, yeah. quite frankly, now it's, it's not to get college credit. It's an admission criteria. If I want to see mm-hmm. that you took three mm-hmm. or four or five AP classes and you got right. four or fives on this many tests. I mean, right. that's, that's clearly what we're, what we're seeing from, from several of the schools. And so that's right. Where, Right. Helping no question. That's almost where dual that. enrollment would come in too, right? When right. I, I, I just learned about that, I had no idea what that was. So that's another avenue that they get college credit and they get high school credit, right? Yeah, yeah. As a, a third, I, I get. Well, I know as a senior you can do it. I think as a junior you can do it too, Kyle. It depends on the class. Yes. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Class yeah. Class it's class. it's becoming more and more of the thing. Yeah. And so. what I hear parents talk about is you might get credit for taking AP government, but if you go to OCC and take Gov 101, Michigan, Michigan State, credit. Western mm-hmm. will give you those three credits. That's Correct. not, mm-hmm. there's no question, right. but it's very different. You have to, usually it's in the evening yeah. and you're not with your peers. So it, it's definitely not something that's going to work for everyone. No, but but I, right now during COVID, my daughter's got two of them, and one of them is five thirty to seven on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so she's not on front of the computer all day long. So she kind of likes it. That's nice. So it's a different it's a different mix. It'll be different with COVID for sure, and when COVID's right. over. But so how would we how do we best communicate this kind of information? I mean, there's it's so much great information, and how do we do it? Do we do a special session? Through PTA, well, I like, PTA, yeah, I like website. that idea. I like that. I like that thinking, Julia. Um, now, actually, tonight might be one of the reasons we're we're less attended tonight at the PTA. There is we didn't realize when we moved the the PTA meeting to not conflict with the board meeting right. that we were now conflicting with the junior class meeting college night, yeah. and so um, you know, so a lot of parents are there. I think what I'm hearing here tonight and and seeing is that maybe we do need we do the freshman orientation but maybe we need to have we have those nights those college nights but maybe we need a where are you in your freshman year you know freshman parents let's get together let's talk about academics and where you are vis-a-vis all of those things and and sophomores where are you you know now the counselors to give them credit the counselors do have those meetings okay but I don't know if we need to advertise them more, if we need to have an additional, or if we need to make it a topic of PTA. Yeah. But um, I feel like by the time everyone's realizing that, you know, college doors are knocking in the junior year, like you said, it's a little late, you know, for some, for yeah. some yeah. things, but it's never late. I mean, right. <laughs> it's right. out there right. and kids right. will find their, their, they will. The, but there's their just always parents. information. So if we can help, you know, right. provide that, um, right. um, uh, and think have parents you know think about some of that from a curriculum perspective and what they want their mm-hmm. kids to be able to do right. um, or or weigh in a little bit more because I know the kids work with the counselors but sometimes the parent probably needs to weigh in to help that yeah. a little bit too yeah. so well Carrie thank you because this was I, I know this is a, an important topic and that timing was good for me to understand because I was hearing both got to got to schedule now got to schedule in February and I wasn't sure and I couldn't answer some questions <laughs> Um, cause Michaela did it on her own and figured it out and she had her own credit card. So I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even do the payment part. So I was not aware of the timing when she did it before. So that's, that's, that's great. Um, Kyle, I don't know whether you had any other topics that you wanted to cover. Go ahead and carry things. Well, I know I just did want to mention some things that have come up. I know we met last week about the schedule and about, um, you know, uh, back to school, the governor's made some pronouncements. It does not, uh, we will, we do plan to be ready December 1st, but that is not going to happen clearly because the governor has issued that um, order. The earliest we could be back would be December 9th. That is not likely to happen given the numbers that I'm seeing. But again, we will be prepared. All the things that I talked about last week, and again, I apologize to the PTA because I've just had such a wonderful working relationship with you this year. And I do count on you for a lot of the communication, but I felt like since the survey, we were asked by the central office to get that survey out and have the answers by Friday, that we really felt that we needed to have that done um, and communicated. And I felt like teachers needed to have, or parents needed to have this information so they could make a decision, which was this information I was planning on giving us tonight. Um, So I hope, you know, we had about 200 parents there. I hope that they found that information helpful. Um, Mike, I know you shared today with ILT 
the uh, latest results, and I want to be completely transparent with the PTA, uh, with whom I, you know, I feel, you know, very connected, and, and I really value our relationship. So, if you could, could you, could you give them a little sense of where we are in the number of parents who are families who are requesting online and uh, or remote learning, as opposed to those who plan on coming in person, because I think that is probably a statistic that everybody is interested in. Yes, I would love to. Uh, <laughs> Juliet, can you let me share my screen? If you don't yeah. mind, I'm very yeah. important. Okay. So as of today, we have 1178 students or families that have responded to this survey. And if you take out That's our students, good. yeah, if you take our students who attend IA and you take out our students who are in the annex, that it's about 1,295 this year. So that 1178 represents about 94%, a little bit more. Uh, and you can see our breakdown here is a little skewed heavy on the 10th grade, but I mean, not a big difference between our lowest class of 22.5 and our highest class of 28.2. Uh, and it's also important to remember that our, our classes are not equal sized. So I would have to really look and see how many, you know, of the seniors 312 makes up. And some uh, information, 71.5% in person and then 28.5 all live stream. Uh, the data that we received in August from central office, it was about an 80-20 split. So we have seen since August an increase of almost 50% of students that, and families that wanna go all online. We also did talk about at our last meeting, Delos, Kyle and I, about transitions. And if they wanna start in, in hybrid and go to all, in, uh, all live streaming, that was a possibility. But if they started all live streaming, they could not switch back. So we do know some families of that 71.5 are, are very, trepidatious about the in-person aspect. So this 28.5 could be even larger as we see things like increases in outbreaks or the possibility of, uh, I mean, for Carrie and Kyle, you know, people who work in the building, if it's snowy and cold and those kids have a car and they can just stay home, we might start seeing that 28 to get closer to 30 or 35. So um, that's the big, you know, we're just seeing a, a, a fairly big increase and a possible even bigger increase from the initial numbers that we collected in August before the CLT decided to put us all in virtual. Thanks, Mike. Um, I hope that's helpful to you. I really want to make sure that we are transparent uh, with our community. Uh, we can post that. Um, but uh, again, as Mike said, it's, it's gone up. I was actually a little surprised. I thought we would have um, less, uh, have more who want in person from some of the um, feedback I've been getting. And so, um, but I think it's an indication of where we are right now in our state when we see these numbers and, and the concern that's being expressed. But that's where we are. But regardless, we will be, we will be ready for our students who want to return. Um, I think Quite frankly, it'll be, um, it's less likely in December, but we, our board has pledged to um, look at it. Uh, so December 9th would be the first day we possibly could come back, but the, um, our uh, board has promised to look at it every two weeks to see if we're ready. Um, and I know that the governor said that K through eight could come back uh, prior to that, but our board at this point is feeling like the numbers and, and our position we are in is, is it requires remote learning, but again, have said, you know, they're, look, they're willing to look at that every two weeks. The problem with that is that really gives us a lot of uncertainty. And, and so it, 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 it almost constrains us because we're always waiting to hear. Um, but as I, you know, as I indicated last week, and that has not changed, we plan to be ready whenever that happens. And those, those classrooms will be as I demonstrated, or as we demonstrated last week, that they'll be ready to, to receive students in the safest manner as possible. Um, one of our concerns is staffing because not all the staffing, not all teachers feel safe to return in that format. And so there have been um, some questions about, can we fully staff 
the high schools um, given that situation. And I'm, I'm not sure, right now we're, we're good to go for second trimester um, in remote learning, but if we should transition back into um, in-person learning, that will be a question. And I wanna be you know, fully transparent with our parent community. Um, and so uh, that's where we are. We're gonna be ready and I wanted to bring that up. The second thing I wanted to bring up was, I know I sent out an, um, an, a parent communication about cameras on, and, um, <laughs> and we, are, we really feel strongly, our, our teachers feel strongly, and that this is, is not about a punitive thing. I know it says, you know, you can be marked absent. It's, it's about student engagement, and the teachers are really viscerally concerned about our students because in order to have engagement, in order to see those kids and build those relationships, we feel like we need to see them. Um, and uh, that if we felt like if we required it to be on, the camera to be on, we could get more of that engagement. And we think it's better for our students' mental and emotional health. We also understand that some students suffer from anxiety and, and teenagers in general, I mean, look at us all, like how many of you just sitting here have looked at yourself more than you have others, you know, and or, or have your cameras off because you're not, you know, you really don't feel like being seen right now. Well, imagine a student, a 15 year old, 16 year old, 14 year old, a student, a freshman who has not even been in our building, okay, yet, and how he or she feels, you know, in, in the classroom. and so. You know, we're really struggling and um, we feel that uh, that the that student engagement in in order to be really Really um, workable needs to be engaged and on and and so uh, We want to work with our students, but we also need to to hold them accountable for being a part of our our our, our classes we feel that strongly in in not just that you need to be here it's no it's we want to see you we want to make sure you're okay you know we want to engage with you we want to to help you we want to see what you're thinking and see how you're reacting and so i recognize that this is problematic um, in some cases we will work with you never think you can't reach out to a teacher or to a counselor or to me that would say hey my kid's suffering here can we transition into this and i'd be I know our teachers would be flexible for that. I know we'd be receptive to that. But for the most part, we need our kids to step up, you know, as, as we all feel, you know, and, this, and, and we've, we've gotten, you know, all sorts of feedback in our, even our adult lives on how we feel in the morning when we get up, take a shower, get dressed from the waist up anyway, and, and get on to work, you know, and so, um, we think our kids need that too for their emotional health as well and well-being as well as for their academic. Um, so we're hoping to work through this. I want to promise and assure you we will work with you and your individual student. Um, but we think this is the best thing um, instructionally, pedagogically, emotionally um, for our kids. But we, you know your parent, you know your kids better than we do. And so please reach out to us. Don't just say, well, that's the rule, you know, no. I mean, talk to us, talk to your counselors. Um, if there's an issue, we'll transition you into it. We're not going to just say, okay, fine. You don't have to have a camera on. We wanna to talk to you about that, okay? And that's what we're asking. And we need you and we think the kids need this expectation. You know, it's not enough to say, okay, no, you don't have to have your camera on because you suffer from anxiety. No. no. What's your plan? Because you're going to have to go next year or you're going to have to go to college next year and you're going to have to turn a camera on at some point and talk to someone. Where can, how can we help you now in high school that's going to get you to that point? Um, and we want to get to know you. And so those, you know, I truly promise that those are the reasons, they're good reasons. It's not punitive, right? I gotta put you on a contendence contract and start calling the truancy officer, okay? We want to work with you. So please, please reach out to us if you have problems with that or concerns about that. Um, our teachers, I've talked to the teachers about that. We promise that we'll be flexible and understanding, but we are going to have those expectations because we do feel it's in the best interest of our, of our students. So 
that's and Kyle, actually uh, Kyle, thank you because along that line I, I ran into a parent actually at a, at a store in Birmingham and we got chatting and and um, I was going to reach out regarding flex is that it was someone who was an underclassman in fresh and uh, I think it was a freshman in the flex program and she said my daughter's just scared to death to speak up because she's a freshman and there are juniors and seniors right and, and what's she going to say and, and she's she's nervous and so um, this I think this parent actually reached out to one of the teachers and said if I prompt you with some questions will you ask my daughter the question to bring her out of you know because she's nervous so maybe the teachers could call them out and there may be other classes where you've got a mix of upperclassmen and, and, and right. freshmen and sophomores and they're mm -hmm. not as comfortable and how the teachers may need to do something a little bit different for some of those students there's probably not as many as there would be in flex because that's a little different than other classes but um, you know, for some of those teachers where they've got a blend, I think it's safe to say that certain freshmen will be afraid to speak up and talk right. in a seminar on a topic when they're when they think they've got upperclassmen right. listening to them, or even their own right. even their own peers, even their own other freshman peers. They're just nervous mm -hmm. and they're scared, and it's hard on Zoom, right? Because everybody all of a sudden looks at you in Zoom a little differently because you versus you're in the classroom and you're in the back and you raise your hand and you make your comment. Or that so. you put your put your picture up. I mean, <laughs> and that's part of it too. Is it's gotten to be like cool to not put your picture right, up, right okay right. and so what's wrong with you that you do put it up you know oh, and boy. you're a weirdo or a nerd yeah. or something you know yeah. so yeah. it's yeah. it's so funny the kids darn it they're like three steps ahead of us every single time you know? <laughs> and we're thinking darn we thought we had this covered right. um but uh I, I really do you know i do think um we want and that's wonderful that a parent would reach out and and explain yes. that or try to work with the teacher on that. Um, we're yeah. very, very, um, very open to that. And, and we really want what's best for our kids. And um, that's great. And I yeah. assure you that the teachers do as well. Thank you. Um, this has been great. I think that I don't see anything in the chat. Any other questions by anybody here? Anything else that we need to cover? We're just a little after eight. I just have one thing, if that's OK. Please, please Stephanie. Um, Kyle? Hi. Yes. Um, I know you're shocked I'm talking. Um, okay, so I thought that PTA, you know, we have the spirit wear that's for sale, right? Right. And I have in my notes that we were supposed to be able to sell our spirit wear until the end of December. Okay. And then the beginning of January, Maple Store, or Maple, is that what it's called? Maple Store? Right. Was the, maple, the Maple Tree. The maple tree, thank you, I apologize. The maple tree was then supposed to start with Bloomfield Sports selling their apparel in January. Oh, I'm and not, that sounds like reasonable because I think they, the school store has a couple weeks of like training and things that they right. do really to begin with, yeah. But they're selling now. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're competing. Thanks. Okay. So that's that's my, the, I, went, I went and checked it out um with hey, stephanie yeah it's andy isn't there's just like i might be wrong but i saw something and I, I so i know what you're talking about because i reposted it and i feel like it was just a real short-term little like pop-up thing but i might be wrong no no it's like just open yeah because it's through okay. bluefield sports is we started right. and went to kyle they weren't okay. online yet we didn't want to take it completely away from them and the kids, right? Sure. Nothing mm -hmm. organized. So right. we, I have in my notes, we agreed till the end of December and then they okay. would launch in January. I, I'm not trying to be like that. So I just wanted to like bring it to your attention. We can. All right. Thank you. I will definitely, I will definitely, okay. Lois, we need to reach out um, to Haley. Right. It seems a little weird that they would start earlier than the class. So, um, right. And it, I looked at the the apparel and I have to say, love it, gorgeous, well done. I liked everything because I've been doing I've been doing this kind of thing for a couple of years, and I was like, oh my god, I never thought of that. That's fabulous. But, <laughs> so I am I love what they're doing, but I just wanted to put it out okay. there in the universe and see what you wanted to do. Okay, I would hey, definitely just, reach out to Haley. Real quick, step. Oh, sorry. Oh, Stephanie, Delos. I was just going to mention the only thing that I advertised was a stop and shop through November nineteenth. Right, because Jill Jill's out of town, so she leaves um, to take care of her parents in Wisconsin. So that's right. why for the month of November it's cut short. Okay. Even with us, it is. You know what okay. I mean. Okay, that's what made me think that it was just yeah. this real short little thing. But it's okay, Thanksgiving and and having to order and get it in and do it to have deliveries to everyone before she leaves. 
for sure. Wisconsin. Yeah, it doesn't okay. have a, in the e-news, it doesn't have a deadline to it. It just says the maple tree is, maple tree is online and you can order what you like and, and here's how to order it. So it just. All right, just, we'll, yeah. Delois, we'll like, definitely look into that. Delois, were you going to say yeah. something on that? Yeah. I was going to say when I clicked the link for maple tree, it does say that it ends on uh, November 19th, which is tomorrow. Oh. Right. So I don't know right. if they're, if both sales end on the 19th or. Ours does too. Okay. Yeah, and then it picks up again after Thanksgiving when Jill is the Blo uh, Bloomfield Hill, uh, Bloomfield Sports owner that we all work with. So um, sh we start ours again close to the beginning of December. I, I can't remember. It might be a couple days in November too, but that's just okay. a timeline for the holidays okay. and her family. Okay. Well, then let me let me make sure that we're set for December. So I'll okay. I'll reach out to Haley. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Last thing, Kyle, for the next meeting, make sure you come with a to-do for Stephanie. Because Please. I have a little trend line. Where every meeting that I have attended with the two of you, you walk away with a to-do from Stephanie. I'm so sorry. Kyle, remember every you love time. me because of SOS. I do love Stephanie. And I just love me because of SOS, so let's remember that you right. love me. Absolutely. No question. <laughs> you raised a lot of money for us, and I will be coming to the PTA. That's a final thing on some yeah. of the, um, the grants. You know, one of the things that you had asked us was, is there something that we can help with from our perspective, from the, you know, a larger lens of the administration? And one of the things that we're looking at is um, there is as we our goal is when we return to allow the we call them the roomies and the zoomies right the kids who are going online which might be 30 35 percent by the time we get there and the kids who are in the classroom to have a feeling of a classroom environment that is together well we are the district is paying for a new sound system in the classroom they're paying for a second monitor to put the students up on that are on zoom they're doing all of this but one thing they're not doing is um there is the, the capability of allowing a microphone that will allow what's going on in the classroom to be heard um by the the room the zoomies so we can have the kids in the classroom can hear the zoomies I mean, it's beautiful. It's like spot on with what they're doing. We can see the zoomies and and we can hear the zoomies, but the zoomies can't hear their roomies. Okay. So there's <laughs> what we I know this is just it sounds it sounds like you. Oh my God, thank God for recording this. I love this. <laughs> so one of the things we saw at BCS was they had this what's it called? A snowball mic. It's fifty dollars a piece, and it could be placed in the middle of the classroom and connected to a laptop which will allow the zoomies to hear what's going on in the room as clearly as we hear in the room what's going on you know with them so um it's fifty dollars a microphone and um and the district is afraid that not all the teachers would want this because it's just one more piece of technology that they would have to learn we think that the teachers are going to find this is really helpful in creating that environment. And so we were hoping that the PTA maybe could help us with some of that. We are fine tuning and going through the process right now in our model classroom to make sure it works exactly like we want it to and to make sure that the teachers understand and want it before we ask you to pay for it. So literally in the next week, we're going to try to finalize all of that and come to you with that request which will be sizable, but not outrageous. Um, so uh, that is something that, <laughs> so Stephanie, that is something I would, I would appreciate approval with um, as we move forward. Um, I got done. See, yeah. I promise, I promise <laughs> it's gotta be something that I really think the teachers will use before I request it. And, and Julia, if, if I, you know, I don't know how much she's asking for, but if you need something from SOS, like yeah, yes, no. I, I think we're okay. Right, I think we're okay right now. Um, okay. As Leslie would say, we've got we've got some money here, and so awesome. I, think we're, I think we're in a good spot. Okay, yeah. that's great. Terrific. All righty. Well, thank you, everybody. Oh, Jenny, please. Can I just share? Just so anybody who's watching this, we approved a grant um, for band that right. came in after grants. Um, so we gave uh, band seven hundred dollars for two wireless microphones and two amplifiers. Um, which they are already using and um, right. are super excited about. So we've approved that. And um, Kyle, 
Delois and Mike, I have three headphones left. If anybody wants oh. headphones, <laughs> oh, so, um, wonderful. I don't know if you don't, they don't, are don't, wonderful. Don't maybe don't send another email because then I'll have ten more people that want the headphones. <laughs> You're right. But You're can I, right. Kyle, can I just drop them off maybe to yes. you in your office? Yes. And if you and I will say them, I will let like, them know I have three, and yeah. they'll be gone within a day. Okay. Okay. I'll drop those off tomorrow. I really appreciate. I I really do appreciate everything that you've all done to support us and. And it's just been a wonderful relationship I think we've had with the PTA and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And I, I really appreciate everything that you're doing to support uh, the teachers and see home. Well, you guys work hard, you, you rock. This is not, a, I mean, it's, it's hard in a normal time. It's crazy making now. So <laughs> I, I just can't, can't thank you enough for all you do for our kids and how you support the teachers because it's, it's and the staff, because it's a hard, you know, it's just, this is just a lot of hard work. This, this, it, with is. All this. it is, I mean, all it the is, but it's, to, be prepared to start but, up and then it gets canceled it's just a lot of effort i know so well it is and we appreciate it and it's worth doing um we believe in it and so thank you thank you for everything you're helping with all righty okay Done. everybody have a wonderful thanksgiving i need minutes uh, approved. hold on hold on yes we need the we need the, uh, the september and october minutes approved please um uh, i motion to approve them second i approve okay okay we good Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm done. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Thank you all for attending. Really appreciate it. Thank you all for right. having me. Uh -huh. Good night. Thanks, Thank Gary. You. Thank you. Bye-bye.